anarchy. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we are reaching a state of near anarchy right now in which the law of the land has become irrelevant. Uh, protesters, they continue to gather outside the homes, the residences of our Supreme Court justices, where they live with their families, and yet we got crickets on the White House. Oh, better than crickets. The White House is actually all for these protests. N need I remind them? that it's actually against the law to protest outside the home of a Supreme Court justice? I, I mean, look, hey, I, I'm all for, you know, freedom of speech. I am all for peaceful protests. But in this case, what's remarkable here is that we do have a law that says you can't protest outside the home of a Supreme Court justice. And there is, there's a reason for that, right? There's a reason for that because it's viewed as a form of intimidation. And our Supreme Court justices, they need to be above it all. You know, they need to be above the politics once they're on the bench. And yet, our Attorney General, Merrick Garland, he does nothing. Our President, Joe Biden, does nothing. It's in part because, well, I, I get it, they don't like the decision that the Supreme Court justices have come to that has been revealed thanks to the Roe v. Wade, Wade leak. But you see, that doesn't matter. Not when we have laws on our books that are designed to prevent the protests outside the homes. In fact, a new poll shows the majority of Americans, regardless of where they stand on the issue of Roe v. Wade, they don't think this is a good idea. They don't think people should be protesting outside justices' homes. And yet again, the White House is silent. It, it, fortunately, you've got some conservative politicians out there that are drawing attention to the issue and saying, okay, enough, including recently Senator Marsha Blackburn out of Tennessee. You've also seen Senator Tom Cotton out of Arkansas make a big deal of this. The federal law, they're saying it, look, it needs to be enforced. Is that too much to ask? Senator Cotton actually just sent a letter over to the Attorney General because, again, the laws on the books need to be there to protect the Supreme Court justices. Think about this. I mean, can you imagine, humor me, can you imagine a decision where it was actually the reverse? I mean, when, if, if they had decided to do the opposite of what they did, and, and if it were actually conservatives that were protesting outside the homes of justices, do you know exactly what would happen? I mean, <laughs> I can see it now. They'd be hauling everybody off to jail, right? But because the protesters are doing what the administration wants and what the Democrats think is politically savvy and expedient, then guess what? Somehow they're allowed to do it. Somehow it's all okay. This is just on par, right? This is on course because this is what the administration wants. And I keep saying this is why we're living in such a dangerous time in which things like government disinformation boards are sprouting up and being headed by people who are active participants in spreading propaganda themselves. <laughs> I'd like to remind the Democrats in charge right now that you know what? This works both ways, okay? It's a slippery slope. Because if you're going to cut off half the country and prevent half the people in this nation who pay their taxes and are law-abiding citizens from having any kind of stake in our future, then guess what? You are gonna risk creating a massive division in this country from which we will never heal. Meanwhile, it's critical. It's critical that political activists like those we have in the White House right now understand that when speech is suppressed or only one viewpoint is allowed, when only one group is able to go out and protest, that can just as easily shift. It can backfire on them in law and order because of that, is so critical no matter the political viewpoint.